We play and call it work. Hey there, Wargamers, and welcome to another episode of The Open Vault. It's me, Colin, and this is the behind-the-scenes show where I walk around and bother people in their daily routine and just uh, see what everyone's up to. Right now, I'm in the forge, as you can see, but right now it looks a little different, aka messy, because next week, starting Tuesday, is the D&D RPG show with Matthew, Luca, Steve, and a few guests, uh, Kenny being one of them. So... I'm gonna turn you around right now as you can see um, it's a big mess the side table that was here has been completely taken apart is over in the hallway and I walk by you will see a pile of lumber and of course the street live streaming computer here um, yeah we are just trying to make room we were playing around with seeing how the table layout is going to work when we do the live stream and we've actually added one of the side tables that will be used in the bunker that has actually been sitting in the warehouse for now as a DM table for Matthew. So he will be at this table. Um, and then we're going to have the players obviously sitting here. But we're just trying to figure out the perfect orientation right now. Um, we have tripod set up there and there. Uh, and the, Okay, well there was one there earlier. I Trust me. Believe me. Not lying. But the idea is to try to get shots that are, you know, from this angle towards here for these people. And that one was supposed to grab people from that way. Because the issue with our last um, go at the RPG show is we had to put all the tripods on this side. So it would be coming kind of this way when these players were kind of looking at Matthew and you'd got more of an ear shot. So we we're trying to solve that problem, but as we were, you know, moving things around and trying out some different angles, we noticed that this one no matter kind of how we place it, will always grab me sitting in this corner, which is kind of breaking some of the immersion of the actual stream. If, you know, you can see me working in the computer, not to mention I'm going to have to stand up and operate, you know, a tripod here that will be looking at a board that should be about there on said table with miniatures for, of course, encounters and such. So we're just trying to figure out different ways to do it. Now, Matthew does plan on building a new table, um, an actual square table that can maybe either go on top of these tables or something for, I mean, it was going to be planned for the new bunker, but we're kind of got the point where it might be commissioned early and used for our D&D show, but obviously with it starting next week, it probably won't be for the first episode. So we're going to have to deal with the not as perfect camera angles coming this way, but eventually we we're hoping to fix that. And yeah, we just went through a bunch of different ideas of how to fix it and maybe turning the table or different things just so I, again, am not in this corner. So we're going to be experimenting with some stuff. So the first episode of the D&D show will not be the perfect layout that we want, but obviously it's already planned and scheduled. So we do uh, just kind of need to go on with that. And just so you guys know, an update on our live streaming content. Uh, last week we hit... A Twitch affiliate, and now we are working our way to Twitch Partner, which we will hopefully have by either the end of this week or right after the D&D show. And that's just the different tiers of uh, partnership with Twitch. Um, there are some differences in there, but nothing I'm going to get into right now. But uh, it's been going very well, so we really appreciate everyone who's subscribed to us on Twitch. It's been fantastic. Um, and uh, if, you know, if you have a Twitch Prime account and want to help us out, um, go over to Twitch and uh, subscribe. We would really appreciate it. But that's kind of what I'm up to, other than uh, I gotta clean this room up eventually. And then I have just finished the Geek Nation Tours for Terrace at Geek Nation Tours. And so that should be going up, whether tomorrow or the next day. But there was a couple little revisions we made on it. Um, Terrace was super apologetic about it, which is not a problem. Things like that happen. Just some changing of some wording in certain places. But we were all able to do it and get it done. So that was Josh and I's project for the past little while. Kind of went on a little longer than we wanted. But of course, with all the new live streaming stuff, I've kind of had to split my time between all the projects I had in the past versus all the new ones. So once, you know, we're kind of up and going with the live content, I'll, you know, be able to work on more of like the highlights channel and things like that that I was working on before all this craziness started. 
And there's the big spider cable monster that used to be hiding under this, and now I'm sad because it's gone. Because now you can see it. But that's kind of me. We're going to head over to Erin, because she has been working uh, quite hard. As you can see, that pile of boxes. And there used to be one that was, like, massively right here. Because what are you doing? We're shipping out uh, Ranger Bloodstone stuff. So the DVDs and the Blu-rays. dun dun da And how, how far are you on that one? I don't know. <laughs> I've shipped about 100 already. Oh, wow. I think that's the halfway point. And so that box there is the Blu-rays? or the that one's that, Blu rays. That one's that's DVD. One of the box of DVDs, and that's the side ones. Okay, so just I plugging think away. Halfway through. Yep, yep. So the rest of the week, this is what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's kind of a break from magnets. Kind of. In the loosest definition. Yeah. Because <laughs> it still involves shipping. It's not a break from oh, the usual no, stuff. Sure. And, and there's lots of yelling in the background. I mean, that's more just here. I will uh, address that later. Yeah. But anything new, uh, you know, tell anybody? No? No. No? No. Okay. Okay. We'll, we'll, we'll carry you. on. <laughs> and how about Chris? What is Chris up to today? Oh, he's got headphones on. He can't hear me. Shalom. What's up? <laughs> oh, you know, open vault stuff. What are we oh. doing in here? I'm simply just editing up uh, Painting Academy stuff. Okay. And uh, yeah, this is my usual setup. I stand in front of the green screen, mm -hmm. as people will soon see in the videos, and it's some of the shots are my mug. And then, of course, we cut to, you know, examples and painting and things like that. And so it's a combination of, of the two. And so, uh, yeah, I'm just continuing editing. Uh, and of course, uh, I think in future installments of Painting Auxilium, the live show on Twitch. Which, yes, you had your first episode last, last, week, yep, yes. last Friday. Yeah, so probably by the time this video is getting posted, I think I'll have another Facebook post. And I think basically what we're going to do is we are just going to continue with this kind of theme where uh, basically I'll you know, have everybody post on the Facebook page uh, their painting questions or hobby-related questions or whatever questions they want. Uh, post them in the Facebook post answer them online as well as talking uh with the uh the chat as it were the live chat as it were. Mm -hmm. uh and uh in also in future episodes expect some uh future uh giveaways Ooh. yeah so we've got a few um um i don't know if we call them sponsors but yeah so people who sent some stuff to give away yeah yeah exactly so they're, they're painting hobby related so it's gonna be really fantastic awesome um i don't think we'll be doing that this week we'll probably probably will be doing starting next week and we'll be giving stuff away on painting auxilium perfect auxilium? 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 that's i mean that, I, I don't know that's i'm pretty sure it's auxilium oh we know the words we use for things. It's, it's Latin. Come on. Let's I, I know, right? Got to go to the, the YouTube and search that robot lady who says all the different <laughs> words I, for I proper tried pronunciation. I, yeah, I tried it, and she didn't pronounce it very loud. I had to turn to speak. <laughs> I was like, what? What did she say? I'm trying to catch the nuance of, of the word, right? Uh-huh. So, anyway, yeah. So, that's that's all I've been working on. Uh, you know, trucking away on this, trying to get this uh, painting academy finished, and, uh, you know. Uh, again, I think we are going to be posting the videos in the vault uh, before we do the full release, so I think uh, okay. that's going to be a thing. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that is a thing, and um, yeah, so vault members can expect to see that in the near future. Fun stuff. So uh, again, if you want to tune into Chris's live show, Friday. Friday, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Twitch. Twitch alone, just Twitch. Yep, so. twitch.tv slash Gaming. Mini War Gaming, Painting Auxilium. It's the hobby show where you get to ask your questions and I'll answer them. And, you know, whatever trouble you need, you are in, what have you, you know, you want painting tips, hobby tips, you know, anything like that, feel free to ask. Everybody's at different levels, so I know some people are, you know, asking what some others might seem are really basic kind of questions. Feel free to ask those questions as well as, you know, the more complex stuff and Again, the show is intended to be for everybody and, uh, yeah, of any skill level, so. All right. So, uh, again, tune into that. I will see you later, Chris. We got uh, Rob and Mike. Let's talk to Mike first, because uh, he's got some dragons. Thank you. 
some nice looking dragons. Do these just come in today? They just came in today. These are, uh, I, I honestly am not sure oh, exactly I which. I know one of them is like um, Warpfire Dragon. One of them is Scarlock. I think this is, I think his name's Scarlock. I forget what the, the other one's name is. Oh, They're okay. Basically, Age of Sigmar dragons um, from Forge World. Awesome. So these were painted by uh, Alan Nock, who is from Morpheus Models. Okay. In the UK. So with Canada Post striking, these right. got held up for a long period of time, so it's actually taken a while. But uh, they finally came in today. He was super relieved to hear that. So fantastic! We got yeah. some Carrick acolytes over there. Yeah. So this will make eighty in total that we have. So wow. we just put a painting party video last, uh, probably last week. Mm -hmm. uh, of forty of them that were done by another company. And this is another forty that were done. So there's a total of eighty that were painted. Jeez. So yeah. It's definitely been busy. Um, and then what else have you been working on? Well, I uh, was helping out with Chris getting stuff for his giveaway. So we got a bunch of paints. Awesome. Work that I'm give away. Uh, I don't want to spoil too much, but I know for sure that Turbo Dork's sending a few sets. So we'll probably Sweet. be giving those away. Um, and there's others, but I want to keep them kind of secret. Oh, for sure. Uh, painting partner stuff has been ongoing. We got a bunch of new terrain videos that are going up. Me and Dave are doing that this morning. Right. Um, I'm just posting Facebook stuff now. And then, yeah, live streams and just tons and tons of stuff. Yep, keeping up on the social medias. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of work. It's tons, but <laughs> it's so much fun, actually. I want everyone to, I want all these dragons to be named. So right now, if you go on our Facebook page, you'll see a picture of this guy. Mm -hmm. And if you want to add a comment in the name, I'm just going to stick a label on the bottom. and that'll Perfect. Be so, awesome. I don't know, something fun and random. I don't know, I find it entertaining. It's mm -hmm. for my enjoyment. So if you want to name them, go right ahead. I'll put a label on them. Fantastic, and then again, the, you're going to do the other two following that, so... Well, yeah, eventually, at some point. There's no structure to this. I'm just doing it, so... Okay, yeah, okay. If you want to name them, when you see a picture of this dragon on Instagram or Facebook, go ahead and put your suggestion for a name, and I will name them. Perfect. So, yeah. Awesome. So we're going to head over to Rob. Ralph. Rob? Ralph. It says Rob right there. The, the name of the dragon is Rob. Oh, that oh, the green one? Put your, put your comment in, Rob. Go on, go on Facebook, put your comment in. Maybe I'll pick you. Who knows? There, I did. <laughs> so what have you been working on? Anything super secretive today or? Uh, I've been, I finished up a really, really cool intro. It's kind of equal to what the uh, Gorka Mark intro was. Oh yes, yes, you showed me that yesterday. Yeah. The song that never leaves your head, mm -hmm. which if you haven't heard yet, um, just be happy because it'll soon be everywhere and in your head forever. And you'll sing it in the shower. And then the visuals are not going to leave your brain either now. Oh, they are hilarious. Yep. All I'm going to say about that is the Powderpuff Girls inspired me. Yes. Yes, it is very uh, reminiscent of that old, uh, I guess, yeah, I guess it is an old cartoon. Yeah. Old-ish. Well, the, the original Powderpuff because like, they came out with the new one and everything. But mm -hmm. anyhow, I'm talking about the original, like in the... The 90s. The 90s, early yeah. 90s, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Cartoon Network, that one. Yeah. yeah. But uh, are we working on just battle reports right now? Yeah, just more battle reports going on, trying to get them done. I see, I see. Lots and lots of battle reports. Yep. Keeps Every me day. busy, keeps me happy. Good, good. Keeps you happy. It does, you, viewers. Sure. Yep, that's right. Yep. Well, all right, well, all right. have fun. Thanks. Um, I'm going to come in here, and not much has changed here. Um, again, Steve's desk, airbrush booth. Matthew is not here this morning. And uh, in here, we have actually used some of the um, wall panels for the bunker. Um, they were just sitting in the hallway. And then Dave came to me yesterday and is like, uh, I know you need some backgrounds for your live shows, so why not use these? So we've got the Age of Sigmar death ones inspired by the, uh, oh, mm, I almost got it. Gardens of Moor, I believe, is that uh, set from GW, which is like the graveyard style theme there. And uh, we've got... The more generic kind of Zoe Mortality style Vatarak studio for the sit and talk. So it'll no longer just be a gray wall. We'll actually have some themes to it. And it's actually kind of cool to be using these and putting them to use because they've, again, just been sitting in the hallway or in the warehouse. Not doing terribly much, of course, waiting for the bunker to be finished. Which I've heard reports of possible drywalling going on today. So it's, uh, it's going somewhere. It's going somewhere. And, yeah, so that's kind of what's different in here. We do have curtains that I need to hang. Um, they were 
made by actually Mike's mom, who's a seamstress. So we got a big pile of curtains that are gonna go here, and they're nice wrap around, blackout completely uh, curtains there. So that should prevent some light spillage in through this for the live streams and whatnot. As you can see, I'm making a thumbnail to be posting um, the Twitch content into the Silver Vault, which is something I also need to do after this. Um, but yeah, just trying to get into the system of having somebody finish a live stream, downloading it and getting it ready to be posted in the next couple days. So at the beginning right now, it might be a little slower to get them into the vault, but we will have a schedule once everything's kind of laid out, which is also something to mention over here. I mean, that's my handwriting, which is just revolting. But Dave has now officially made the Shrine of Chaos. Today at 1 p.m. is the date for it. And uh, so, unfortunately, we're not going to be seeing a lot of Dave in the open vault, that means. Because uh, he's going to be working as a live show, which is something he's working on literally right now. So, that is something to think about in the future and to be aware of. That that's what, oh, oh why does that thing keep moving? Uh, that is a workout dummy that's been here and it's been a joke to put it on Matthew's desk and now it keeps moving and it's terrifying because you just walk into it everywhere and I hate it. Yeah. Um, actually, someone's in here. Dun dun. Hello. What do we have going on in here? Oh. Sigmar. What is, what is on your head? It's so tight cool. on his head too. I don't know, how's that? Why does it smell in here, Luca? <laughs> it does. It? it does. What? Buddy. It has a very faint this, odor. This is why I brought this. This is my gas mask. Ah. <laughs> okay. I'm surprised you're not complaining if it, if it actually does it. Actually, it does. You, you've, been, you've been handling I've it. I've been, yeah, my eyes are still watering, but I mean, it's not, it's not as bad as it normally is. <laughs> I mean, and it's that but thing I, of... I've gotten used to it. Uh, Columns walk fresh into it. I know. That's fair. I guess you've gotten used to it. It was like... I, left, I was in the hallway when you were talking with Aaron because it was bad. Hey, just so you know, we're talking about Lucas farts. Oh, yeah. thank you. Not my B.O. I know. I, I just yeah, wanted to make yeah, that yeah, embarrassing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wanted to make that well known. <laughs> yeah. You just came back from lunch and Lucas after lunch farts were the worst. Like, me and Josh had burritos. You didn't even have burritos. Had a sandwich. You had, no, you had, looked like turkey and mashed potatoes and some gravy. It was pork. It was oh. pork mashed potatoes, yeah. Right. And a sandwich. I had your sandwich. Steve, Steve's a man who buys one too many of everything. Typically. Sometimes he wants three burgers, but he can only eat two, so I get the third burger. Sometimes he, he buys two sandwiches, knowing he can only eat one. I like to make sure I get extra food just in case I'm still hungry. Ah. I don't want to risk not having enough at lunch. I see. It's uh, just to prepare yourself. <laughs> so, what are we doing in here? So, Neth versus uh, Slaves of Darkness. Yeah, this is Ooh. Age of Sigmar. This is our second game of the day. We played one earlier. It was Night Haunt versus Order. Is it pretty much free people? Mostly, but yeah, it's all Empire. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Old Empire miniatures. Yeah, he, just, he, he looked at him and was like, I miss them. I'm going to play them. I'm like, all right. I'll play. I, I looked at what I wanted to play. I'm like, I'll play Night Haunt. And today, I've been itching to play some Sylvaneth. I was going to play the last game when you played Order. I usually don't like playing Sable Legions versus Sable mm, Legions. Oh, sure. Yep, makes sense. So, I'm like, oh, here's my chance to play Sylvaneth again. Trying to learn them. Uh, we have way too much Sylvan Death. We have a lot of Sylvan Death now, yeah. yeah. We have like 120 Dryads. Woo! We have 60. Do you know the Spike Revenants and Tree Revenants and all that? We have like 60 Tree Revenants and really like know? 20 Spike Revenants. Jeez. Why would you ever need that many? It's ridiculous. 60 maybe. And, and I know that Matthew's response will be for a campaign. For a campaign. For a campaign. We have like six Tree Lords. We have four Spirit of Durthus, four Tree Lord Ancients. That's insane. Galarial. I learned this thing is airtight. Oh crap, one. Oh no. Oh, the noise it made. The, the, the eyes like immediately fogged up. It's a, it's a bad design for a helmet, everyone. I think it's it's a prop. So Matthew got this as a prop for his uh, like collector's edition follow up. Kind of oh no, he's dying. Oh no, he's gassed himself. <laughs> this is incredible. This is like watching. It's like watching a child put a paper bag over their head. It is actually. I no one came to save me. Ah. Uh, we kind of wanted you to figure it out for yourself, I guess. Oh, I'm like wet in there. I'm a, huge, <laughs> I'm a huge, huge fan and advocate of natural selection. <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, you know, Lucas' boy, Charles Darwin. 
<laughs> oh, I'm one, dude. Appreciate it. No problem. <laughs> oh, jeez. I. Oof. Steve and I are both sick as well. Uh, yeah. So yeah. this this room is a pestilential kind of conversation of disgusting. Wow, I'm really happy to be standing you're in it. You're sick for being in this room. I was like sick two weeks ago, guys. Don't do this to me again. <laughs> Phil, Phil from the glacial, <coughs> Phil from the glacial geek got us all sick, or so he. Oh sure. Yeah. Blame the guest. No, that's what he said. Yeah. <laughs> Phil said it. I, I was leaving on Friday. I said goodbye. Phil. I was like, are you sick? Yeah. I started getting sick on Tuesday. Oh, I've been sick all week. I probably gave it to you. Oh, Thanks. Well, I forgive you. I guess. <laughs> Steve, Steve seems to be suffering pretty bad. I mean, I'm already right. okay. I don't know. Your voice sounds a little he does, he does, deeper. He does. Yeah. Also, he does a better Kermit impression when he's sick. <laughs> Go. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, Kermit the Frog here. <laughs> Kermit here. I'm gonna move up. <laughs> and you can't keep a straight face and do it. Kermit the Frog here. <laughs> I have a lot of cold medication. I can't give you a break. <laughs> okay. Well, in order to not, you know, Become horribly sick. I'm gonna leave you guys to it. <laughs> Bye, dying people. See ya. Bye. And then we're gonna head over to Mr. Josh, who's sitting here with his laundry. Who's this? Um, well, Steve's not great at cleaning up after himself. But uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna make some nice cinematic camera angles with the Ooh. with the trash in the front. There might be a live action intro that we're going to do. Mm. Pull some costumes out for. I see. So these are what's left over from the Rangers film then? I think so. I think that's where it's all from. Okay. Well, we'll assume that that's where all the stuff from the vault comes from. Because there's just some stuff Usually, in there. That's, that's a pretty safe assumption because there's a lot of it in there. So what are we working on? Um, I just finished up emails, jumped on to Dave's live stream just to make sure it's kind of going well, not dropping uh, frames or anything like that. Look, it's Dave live streaming. Yes. If you're seeing this now, uh, it's over, unfortunately. Yes, true. That is true. Um, but yeah, no, just kind of finished up emails, kind of going through the schedule now and seeing where I can plug and play and maybe get some people in. Okay. There's a lot of times that people will try to book a game. Yep. They'll say, unfortunately, there's no space. Um, but then when there's cancellations, I can kind of go back and look at certain emails on people that were flexible. Yep. Uh, I mean, if it's somebody that's, you know, quasi local or something like that. Yeah. I'm like, oh, you know, you're, you're only from an hour or two away, you know, um, or, or closer than that. And I know you wanted to play, but, uh, I had a guy cancel next week. There's a spot open now if you want it. Mm-hmm. So just yeah, kind of doing that part of it. So yeah, the emails are done, and now just kind of trying to see where I need to plug gaps in the schedule with everybody coming in. I see. I see. We've had to pump the brakes a little bit for some of the scheduling stuff because we're getting closer and closer to the bunker being ready. Yeah, I have noticed a little less guest activity in here yep. in the past. Yep. Like a couple weeks. So yeah, it's all about striking a balance. Um, yeah. Which is, I think, one of the things that Matt used to stress about, so that's why I do now. <laughs> Yeah, no, it works out uh, quite nicely. And that, and obviously with the live shows coming up, that kind of I means certain people aren't going to be available on, like, locked days. So yep. that's something for you to be thinking about, of course. Yep. So it's good. But, yeah, it's definitely it's it's a lot of kind of massaging the schedule to make it work. I think it's the best word for it right now. Mm-hmm. See Josh kind of rubbing a, his computer with his hands. Schedule no, <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a constant balancing act of making sure that we have enough content, but not wanting to stockpile the footage too much. Mm -hmm. um, like I know, uh, I played a game against the guys from Degoff Rockers a little while ago, mm -hmm. not that long ago in the grand scheme of things, but it went out earlier this week. But in the meantime, there was an Orc FAQ that had dropped that changed a couple things. Oh, so it's trying to avoid that stuff as much as possible. But right. I do, we're never going to be perfect about it, right? Yeah, because in an ideal world, we could be, you know, two months ahead of time. Sure. But we well, never really know. Be, right? Yeah, right. Like a couple years ago, that's exactly how we, the schedule would kind of run. Correct. And then if anything, like an FAQ or something would drop, we'd kind of have to mass drop content. Yep. So, trying to prevent that as much as possible. Yeah, we want the, con uh, the content to be kind of, you know, as relevant and fresh as possible, but not us having to rush it because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think more and more people are starting to understand the concept of like 
a two hour, let's say a two hour bat wrap that doesn't take two hours to film. It takes a lot longer than two hours to film. Oh yeah. Plus it needs to get edited and then needs to get uploaded and everything else. There's there's more of a process than I think some people realize. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, there, there's definitely a chain of people that it has to go through. Yep. So it just takes time for each person to get to it. Correct, yeah. So, that's good though. Um, yeah, it's a relatively light day for me. Okay. We think. Oh, yeah. No, I filmed the start of the Death Watch campaign, the next one coming up, with Luca the other day. Right. That's going to be... Is that going to be the first narrative campaign that Matthew hasn't run? Other than... Or, like, Matthew and or Dave hasn't run? Um, I think so. That like, They have no involvement with. Because, I mean, they've done ones in the past where, like, other people have written them a little bit. But I think this is the first one where... Yeah, they have no involvement. Um, or Matthew literally kind of told Luca, this is kind of what's happening. Yep. And he's been working with, oh, what's his guy? Uh, Miles Drake. Miles Drake, right. Yep. And uh, save the writer, obviously. Yeah, doing the, I believe he's done work for both the story times as well as, if not the entire thing for the mission, a lot of work on the mission writing. Okay, um, okay. So it's Luca's job to, to basically take everything that's been crafted and, you know, execute it properly, making any little minor tweaks that need to be made. Yeah, help bring it to real life. Yep. And obviously, tweaking it to what kind of we have resource-wise here. Exactly, yeah. You know, sometimes we have to change stuff a little bit, and you got to be ready for doing some certain stuff on the fly. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, overall, so so far so good. Good. Uh, I chuckle that this is, because uh, this is the first Death Watch narrative campaign I've been able to play in. I've Even though you're the one who... Plays I'm a Death Watch player, yeah. Death Watch? Um, I was actually the Death Watch player because uh, I couldn't be in the first Death Watch campaign. Oh! Uh, so I'm like, well, I guess I'll just start my own army and do my own thing then. Nah. So yeah, that's kind of nice to come full circle. Um, I do have the starting team here. Ooh. So I think the goal here was I wanted to use... Uh, um, Marines from my existing collection without any real modification. Right, because typically whenever we've done a Death Watch in the past, it's kind of been that content producer had a day or two to kind of build their own and paint all new models for yep. the war bands and that they come use. Up with their own custom loadout and, mm -hmm. you know, be able to research and pick the chapters that make sense because there's the chapter tactics and everything else involved. And right. I, I wanted to try something a little bit different, and I just said, I'm going to grab some models from my collection that I like that have shoulder pads that people sent in. Mm -hmm. um, so I just grabbed a couple different ones. Uh, I didn't bother looking at the different uh, chapter tactics. Okay. Death Watch rules, because I said, I don't really care that much. I don't need to optimize. I'll have more fun if I'm not 100% optimized in right. the system. Because I think that's... That's half the fun of playing a narrative. Yep. I'm not sitting there and being like, well, this one, this guy will get plus one toughness, so how do I blah, blah, yeah, or... Stack the bonuses properly exactly. to try to exploit. Because uh, Death Watch, the, 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 our, our rule system that's available on the Mini Wargaming website, it, it can get pretty out of hand anyways. Mm -hmm. um, so without giving anything away, so we got the... Other than, I'll show you who's part of the team. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to try to get my, the names all correct, too. Um, I'm not going to do shoutouts for everybody that sent the shoulder pads in because I don't have it all in front of me right now. Yeah, we're uh, gonna, but I did in the first video. We're going to say that uh, this is a, obviously the shoulder pads that you requested people send in to add to your collection. Yeah, if you weren't familiar with that, I put it up on Facebook ages ago. And people still send stuff every once in a while. And I said, if you have your own custom Space Marine chapter and you want to send in a shoulder pad, uh, you know, I encourage you to do so. Mm -hmm. Big thanks to everybody that did. Um, not just the ones featured in this video. Because it, it's led me to have, I think, one of the coolest, most unique Death Watch collections, bar none. I, yeah, I think it's super cool. And it's nice because, I mean, there is only so many Space Marine Legions you can pull from. Yep. So eventually you start hitting a uh, copy or two. And exactly. You know, it's a, here's my Ultramarine, there's my Blood Angel, there's my Imperial Fist, there's my other Ultramarine. Exactly. You that don't really get the full kind of... I don't know, variants that I think Correct, yeah. you would see in a real Death Watch chapter? Uh, yeah, and, and even like there's some that I have that are from pre-existing chapters that you don't get to see a whole lot. Mm -hmm. um, there's some funny, obscure stuff. But yeah, so Captain Agamemnon. All right. The Sour Tours, Sour Tours chapter. That gold star there, which I... Oh no, focus! I believe is a uh, 3D printed pad there? I think that's one of the 3D printed pads, yeah. Um, so we've got him, 
We've got uh, Karsis, my Hellblaster. Cool. From the Exorcists chapter. So that's an existing Games Workshop chapter that never really gets much love. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never seen a full Exorcist army, but the fellow that sent that in has one. Very cool. So super cool there. Um, Tristan, my uh, biker from the Knights of Avalon chapter. Cool. Kind of stay here waiting for the next yes. one. Uh, Ashmodai, my Terminator from the Lamenters chapter. Very cool. And so this is Adam from Greenleaf Terrain that had uh, given me that one. Yeah, this is, I guess this will, probably would have been back when he was painting his Lamenter army. It was, he, I think he, Art. actually, I think he had it pretty well done. Okay. He, he painted up one of the remaining shoulder pads for me because, like, I love the job that he did on them. Oh, for sure. That's one of those armies that no, we now own. Yes. When it came to selling it, we were snatching that one up because it's probably one of the best painted armies we have. Probably, yeah. And I mean, the Lamenter is another really cool chapter I've liked for a long time mm -hmm. uh, that you don't see a whole lot of representation of. Mm -hmm. um, we have Auruk's Iron Chest of the Iron Hands. Cool. Um, so that was sent in by JP. Uh, he was the little fella I played uh, a while ago now. If you want to check out a really fun bat rep, it was uh, my Night Lords versus his Iron Hands. Uh, he thrashed me. Um, pretty good. Not not that much of a spoiler. Well, I guess, yeah, it's a pretty big spoiler, but who cares? It's still a fun game anyway. I was going to say, it's a, it's a fairly older battle report too, if so... you haven't watched it already, but go back and rewatch it, even if it's just the intro. Uh, JP <laughs> was 8 when we filmed it. Yes. So, super, super fun game. Um, and last but not least is Yeldir. And that's another one of the custom ones for sure. Yep. Uh, that's the Knight's Revenant chapter. I really like this one. It's kind of got like a spooky little like demony cat kind of face on it. It's Yeah, it's supposed to be like the weird little... They're not actually like demons, but I think it's the, um, the inhabitants of the planet that they're from. Mm, okay. Yep. Cool. So that's a... Dark Angel's successor that uh, he's come up with. Oh, okay. So yeah, pretty cool stuff. Um, the let me think. The Knights of Avalon are a Imperial Fist successor, and the Sorcerers are an Ultramarine successor. Okay. If memory serves correct. Um, but yeah, some really really cool stuff. And then I've got a couple more guys waiting in the uh, roster, I guess, if I need to add more to the team. Okay. But that's what the starting team is anyways. All right. That sounds pretty fun. Yeah. And so uh, that, that one should be, I guess, how long will it take before that one comes out? Mm. If it's any more than a month, I'd be surprised. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I that's gotcha. It. That's all I've got going on right now. Okay. Well, I guess I will leave you to your last couple emails and sounds good. schedule massaging. Schedule massaging. Be some awkward entrances for some people coming in. Again, Josh rubbing his computer. This is some of the new terrain we got, I believe. Uh, it's kind of got like a very 40K kind of, it's almost like the stuff that Adam has built for us in the past from Greenleaf. But again, it's like that pre-painted. I'm not, I don't think Mike has had this stuff labeled, so I'm not gonna, I don't wanna say the wrong company and be wrong about it and feel bad. So uh, that I'm sure you will see a video for either already existing or gonna come out in the next little while. But we're gonna come in here for no real discernible reason. Dave's in there, obviously, filming his live stream. And uh, that's kind of that. I think that's it for you guys. Oh, wait, wait. I have to show you something. Look at all this snow. This is what we woke up to this morning. Yesterday there was like maybe a little bit of snow. But it's, uh, now that it's obviously noon, the snow plows have been out, they fixed the roads up, and they're back to kind of normal, but, oh boy, is Canada being Canada, and it's snowing quite a bit. And uh, right now, Lee is not here today. Uh, he might be in a little bit later, but he was actually receiving um, a shipment, uh, like there was a drop off from some supplies he purchased for doing some home renovations. And they didn't actually tell him, like, you know, when you get that delivery thing where they're like, you know, I'll be here between 
noon and five. He didn't even get that. He said, they'll call you when we're coming. So he's been at home waiting for an order. So no lead today, but we will make sure we get to him next week for sure. But that has been the open vault here on YouTube. And now I'm going to make a second video over in the Mini Wargaming vault, where I'm actually gonna go and ask everybody what their favorite GW paint color is. Cause um, I'm actually kind of wondering, and I was wondering that myself of what my favorite color would be. And then I thought that that might be a kind of cool idea to do similar to what I did in the past with the um, creating your own custom character uh, by throwing it on them kind of without telling them and having them give me an answer right on the spot. So jump on over to the Mini Wargaming Vault to see that right now. And uh, I will see you next week, guys. Happy Wargaming.